Hey everyone, my name is Rick Porter and I'm calling out of uh, Portland, Oregon, and I'm one of the founders of Discover. Discover is a decentralized social network that's built completely on the internet computer. That means the front end and the back end are storing data and retrieving data, and updating data completely on chain. So every aspect of Discover is on chain. And what makes Discover unique is that it's a completely decentralized social network that's going to be community owned and community governed. Uh, so Discover was kind of created uh, through deep investigation into how do you actually build applications on the internet computer. It really started off as, you know, is it possible to do assembly script? you know, write assembly script with inside of uh, a canister and deploy it onto the network? And the short answer is yes, it was. And at the time it was. But what was more interesting is as I was messing around with these, the internet computer and playing with the data models, I realized, you know, you could actually probably build uh, a social network on top of this. Like, and it was a probably at the time, the, the network wasn't launched yet. It wasn't completely ready for prime time. It was pre uh, mainnet launch, let's say. So through the investigation, I was like, wow, I could get real time here. I have queries that are happening in hundreds of milliseconds and updates happening what seemed to be about two seconds at the time. And I was able to retrieve quite a bit of data over time. So I started flushing out what does a data model look like for a social network? Like what are the generics that you might get when actually uh, building something like that? So we put together a high level data model, which you know, everything's just content, right? And then you just have users and then you have these kind of channels and sub channels. Uh, and so we had a pretty complex data model, which we thought represented what a, a social network might use. So we decided to launch early and test early. And this is the time during Sodium. And as soon as we put things up, uh, users started using it. We started getting logins, people started posting uh, posts and people started replying to comments. And it was really just, it wasn't like, oh, well, we're going to full on build a social network now. It was like, well, the users are having this problem, so let's fix it. And I say we probably recursively went through that conversation in infinitism to try to solve every single minor problem that the user is having. But throughout these iterations, you know, these, these smart contracts or the canisters where the code exists are, are they're upgradable, right? So it's not like we had to take everything down and put it back up and give them a new endpoint to actually talk to or a new smart contract address to use. We just had to progressively update uh, the canister itself. So we were able to start adding new features, right? But we always found a solution. We always found a way to be able to handle the load uh, that is required to uh, maintain proper user growth and a proper user experience. And even to this day, you know, we're far more than a year has already passed and we still have those quick responsive pages with far more complex models than we started off with. But the, the journey was really interesting. You know, it was what kind of tokenomics do we need in place? What kind of governance tools do these users actually need? What should the user experience actually feel like? And, and that's when I started working closely with the founding team and specifically uh, Alex. And how do we like, how do we write a message about this, right? So this really started off as, is it possible? And then once we discovered, yeah, this is actually possible. It is actually possible to build a real time social network on the internet computer that gives you that web two feel that's completely happening with inside of web three. So we knew the goal was to build this to continue to build this and flush out all the different user journeys and stories, but um, we needed a team to do it. And so we started growing our, our team uh, and it was very small for a long time. I, I would say discover for the first year was about three people, uh, which was just enough to handle the amount of users that we are getting. But obviously we needed to grow a larger team to be able to add all the features necessary to make a social network work. And, you know, I don't want to dive into every little feature on discover, but we have NFT gating, you know, we have these portals, which are sub communities that exist on Discover, and you can gate these communities through NFTs and through NFT ownership. You can even gate these communities through traits on NFT. So if your NFT has a hat and you want to make it so that only people who have that hat can 
uh, have conversations within your community, you can actually do that. And, uh, you know, we have typical social features like, you know, follow. Follow is something that uh, we sat on for a while, but because these are upgradable, because these canisters are upgradable, you can continue to evolve the model that exists. You can continue to evolve what is actually happening with inside of uh, the back end. What's, it, what's also interesting is, you know, the internet computer, it's interoperable, right? So you have a network of canisters that you can access. And it's just like any other blockchain where you have a network of smart contracts that can communicate with each other. So we're starting to work more with the ecosystem and starting to leverage other ecosystem applications. So like an example is we have uh, Stoics, uh, which is a, a wallet, and they also have an uh, NFT standard called EXT, which is widely used on Discover at this point. So we have like an actual integration with these NFTs. We have the same thing with uh, DIP721 by Fleek and uh, the CCC standard. So because of this interoperability, we get access not only to the things that we're building for Discover and that are Discover specific things, but we're able to access all the other ecosystem projects and leverage their creations too. Anybody on, who's building on the IC can provide functionality for others on the internet computer. So that's how this plays into that interoperability is that we're really working together to build something uh, that we can all use. And uh, the, you know, this is the, the point of this ecosystem at the point of we are right now, it's, you know, there's a tons of developers. It's very easy to get help and uh, have conversations on how to overcome typical problems that you might face while developing an application. But even more is if you need to collaborate on something, hey, here's a service that our team doesn't necessarily uh, have the desire to build, or here's a service that might be useful for other uh, projects on the internet computer. So how about you guys build it and open source it and it's something that we can integrate with. And NFT gifting, going back to it real quick, is just a perfect example of that. It's designed in a way that could be used by pretty much any platform on the internet computer to gift uh, to gift to their users and target content that they like. And uh, that, that plays back into like, how are we leveraging airdrops to, you know, our airdrops are open, right? Like everyone's principles are public. If you uh, create your own community on Discover, you can whitelist users and grab uh, bulk grab those principles and airdrop them too. So we don't necessarily have control over these airdrops. Any user can airdrop any collection of users on Discover as a platform as it is right now. Thank you everyone for uh, listening. And if you are interested in working at Discover, we're hiring. We're hiring a lot of people. We're hiring back-end engineers, front-end engineers, product, UI, UX, uh, and community managers. So check out our jobs. Um, also, please check out the platform and give us feedback. You can find us at discover.one, D-S-C-V-R.one. And uh, sign up, play with the platform. And we have a feature request and bugs area. So please leave some messages there and we will always check them out. We read it every day. Uh, and thank you again.